I want to talk about, so you contracted Lyme disease and this was a life threatening disease, right? Like yeah. did, did doctors ever say, Gary, I don't know if you're going to live. Yeah. 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 So this is literally a life threatening disease. So you're going through this, you're on top of the world now, you know, it's crazy. Cause now you're like, you, you have no idea, right? I'm sure all these things are going through your mind, making money, living your legacy, your kids, your family. Um, so Susan, let's just start with you. I mean, what was this like, right? Were you having to work harder, a couple of jobs, just trying to take care of Gary? What was going through your mind? Well, when it first started, you know, we kept going to doctor after. So Lyme's disease presents itself in lots of different symptoms. We didn't immediately know it was Lyme's disease. It took us a good four months to actually get that diagnosis. And up until then, we had seen doctor after doctor after doctor. And it was the most heart-wrenching thing to see the doctor say, there's nothing wrong with you. Wow. So it was, you know, and and being held, being handed anti-anxiety medicine. And knowing my husband, knowing there is something wrong, and, and it was just our desire to continue to fight to find something that, that we could pin it to, um, we just couldn't give up. There was, there was no point in giving up. I, told, I said, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. We're not going to give up. We're going to just keep fighting. So, so if, finally, you, if you think that you wouldn't, have, if you wouldn't have kept fighting and you would have said, the doctor said, I don't know, nothing's wrong with you and take this medicine, what do you think would have happened? So we actually, our doctor, at the point we actually even identified what it was, he said, you probably have six months left. Wow. He goes, it is, it has attacked every major organ. It's gotten into your brain. It's really, it's really done a lot of damage. And at that point, I, you, you have a very limited amount of time. So it was before the diagnosis, you had taken a family medical leave act from work, um, I, so I taught school and taught home economics and it, it's not I, funny. I love it's home like, ec, by the way. I took, <laughs> I took home ec, yeah. That's how Good. I learned how to cook. So anyways, <laughs> go on. <laughs> so um, he came to work with me every single day and it was, it was, it was watching him. So we, I taught at a private school. Our children went to that private school. And so it was like, we got to go to school every day with the kids every day at lunch. So I, I was home economics and I was a food service director. So every day at lunch, I was in the cafeteria, Gary was in the cafeteria, the kids could come see us. So it was watching him go from being an executive status to helping me wash dishes that it's like, you know, first off, he's like, I can't believe you would even want or ask me to do that. And I'm like, well, you're not too good to wash dishes. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, it, but it was the desire to help, to make him keep going. Mm. It's like, no matter what, I mean, we're just going to wake up the next morning. We're going to get up. We're going to get dressed. We're going to go to school. We're going to go to work. And you're right. I mean, I did. I, I took on three different jobs. I, um, every weekend I would, I would work for a property management company and clean out houses or paint houses or construction work is one of my favorite things to do. And being a school teacher, I would do it every summer with the kids. So, um, so we would do it on the weekends. I, uh, answered phones late at night. I had a, you know, and like your first at home job, which was out of the blue back then. But, um, so yeah, we just, I, I don't even know how we made it, but, our lights stayed on. We had food in the kitchen. We had our bills paid, and and yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's, and found that's the right cool. doctor. So yeah. that was that was our keys to keep going. Yeah, I mean, the so yeah, Gary, talk talk to us about. So you got this diagnosis, six months to live. You can't hardly take care of yourself. Yeah, I, I went back to a, probably like a five year old mental state, if you, you want to consider it that way. I mean, just not technically. I mean, I could I could get up, I could take care of myself to a degree, but. I would have 10 to 20 panic attacks a day. It had gotten in my nervous system. I would wake Susan up three to eight times a night with different panic attacks and impending doom and feeling like my heart was racing. The Lyme had gotten in my heart, so it caused it caused my heart to be have different arrhythmias and it would have it would speed up or get my whole my pulse rate would drop really low. I get really headed, really dizzy. It would send me into panic attack after panic attack, thinking I was going to die. Mm. And then now hearing that I might not make it, didn't know when that day was coming. And and it just the way lying works is it just starts slowly shutting things down, the infections do. And so I, at this point now, I'm starting to see it in my blood work. My liver's not functioning properly. My 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 heart, I was on a heart monitor. My heart was all over the place. You know, I had, um, you know, a nervous system problem at that point because it was in my nervous system horrible headaches, pain, pain in my head. Like I'd never, I can't even explain to you what it was like. It was, I remember waking up one night and asking her just to take a hammer and hit me over the head wow. and saying, 
And then she's like, what? And I'm like, I, I just need somebody to relieve the pressure. I said, please, I, I promise you I won't be mad at you. Just split my head open. I mean, it was, looking back, it was the most crazy thing you could ever say to somebody. But, like, I, I needed the pain to go away. It was that for nine months. It was just a constant pain. And I just wanted it gone. Like, at that point, and I remember saying to her, I don't want to live like this anymore. I just, I just want it over. Mm-hmm. And I had gone nine days without any sleep. It had messed with my nervous system so bad that I didn't sleep for nine straight days. Um, and so she, she scheduled a call with my sister and, and a pastor at our church. And, and we went in and had a really good conversation with him. And I remember saying, I just don't want, I just don't want to lose my mind because yeah. I've always made money with my mind. And, uh, and he says, well, it's not yours. Mm. It's not yours to keep. It's, it's God's. And, uh, and we went through. It was a pretty tough time at that point. Mm. And, you know, he uh, he said, you know, God's a very sovereign God. Mm-hmm. And he'll give it back to you if he wants. Mm. And uh, I don't talk about this a lot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, it was a hard time yeah it's really easy to go back into that mental state of where we were yeah yeah right questions (laughs) (laughs) but uh you know we we made it through god was very gracious to us i remember being in a parking lot and uh just wanting to buy her a cup of coffee (laughs) and we didn't have any money left we had spent it all on life our whole life savings on doctors Mm. and i felt so selfish you know, how dare I? Why didn't I just let it happen? Why didn't I just pass away? You know, and why would I waste all this money? I've left, now everything I've worked for, I've left her with nothing. And I feeling overwhelmed with that, you know, just that guilty feeling of feeling so selfish and that I won't. And uh, we're, we're going to uh, Duncan and she would get horrible headaches and still does. And she would, caffeine tends to help. And, and so I was just, just wanted to buy her a 50 cent cup, cup of coffee and we didn't have it. And we were looking through purses and change and car seats and just everything to try to find 50 cents. And um, I think we had like 45 cents and something. And I'm like, pull up, just, you know, go ahead and get in line. And so a lot of people there and I said, give me a couple more minutes. I, you know, I'm going to look in the back and she let somebody else go in front of us. I'm just pull up, babe. Maybe, maybe have one of those little jars that have like some change in it. Maybe we can take it out of there. And we pull up and he's like 53 cents or we're like thinking it's going to be 53 cents or something. And the guy hands us coffee and says, all right, have a good day. And we're like, whoa, 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 how much is it? And he's like, no, the person in front of you just paid for you. Mm. And then, you know, just things like that would happen with the church. And we had $50 left in our bank. And I turned to Susan and we had, we had just gotten, I, she, we cleaned out a house and got $500 and $50 left. And it was our tithe money and it was 10%. And uh, I, I turned to her and I said, you know, we have to tithe. And she's like, here, it's all I have. Yeah. She's like, I don't, I don't know how to buy groceries this week if we put that in there. And I said, well, I'm not going to have any more, so you're going to have to put the money in the bank. <laughs> so she did. <laughs> she put it in, and uh, we got in the car and just cried the whole way home because we had no money left. Mm. And we walk up the house, and there's a check there. We had overpaid a doctor by $55. <laughs> and God had given us back the fifty dollars plus five dollars for tithe, wow. and uh, I'll never forget that those moments. I mean, there were time after time. I, I shared a couple stories with you, but how God just made sure all our needs were always supplied for. We never fell behind on our personal home. We never lost anything. The kids didn't. We were a, the kids were in a private school. We worked extra. They cleaned the cafeteria so they could go to school for for free. Like we did everything we could do. We just we busted our butts to make sure we made it through. And it was, it was so humbling because I went from being a corporate exec, making hundreds of thousand dollars a year. We literally just won executive of the year. That year I got sick. Seven out of 10 years, I'd won that. Highest add on revenue, highest client retention rewards, all kinds of stuff. And, and God just used it to really humble me mm. in a really big way. And, uh, and I remember sitting there when the doctor said, you have maybe six months left to live. And I just uh, think to myself, is this really all it is? This is, this is it, right? And I remember promising God that he, if he gave me my life back, I'd give it back to helping other people. And, uh, and we came out of it, you know, I found a doctor, we came out of it. We started getting better. It took me a full year from the time that we started finding the right treatments. And that was a journey in its own right. But 
um, we finally found the right treatments and got to uh, got to a place of healing. And I, I remember waking up that morning, like it was yesterday. I sat on the side of the bed, and the headache was finally gone. <laughs> wow! And uh, I turned to her and I'm like, "Give me the keys. <laughs> Give me the keys." It's just like, what? Where are you going? Well, like, I haven't driven in over a year. I want to drive. And she's like, "No." And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, so I jump in the car and I take off. I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just driving. And I, you gotta understand, I haven't left her side in 12 months at this point. And uh, the fear, the anxiety, all that came that comes along with the illness. I just wanted to, I just wanted to be free again. I was 15, 16 years old when I left home for the first time on my own. And I'm driving around and I come back home and walk in the house. And she's just sitting there crying. I'm like, what are you crying about? <laughs> she was like, I didn't know where you went. You know, I mean, I didn't realize, you know, all this had put so much fear in her heart of like, did he go just end it all? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, what? where did he go? Why did he take off? And I remember coming back in and just telling her that I just felt better. You know, I couldn't put on why I felt better or what was happening. The treatments were working, the doxycycline, the minocycline, all these different antibiotics I had me on was finally working. And, um, and, and we started, uh, we started to explore the opportunity going back to corporate America and they had kept my job for me for over a year. And, uh, and I remember calling my boss and, and, and telling him that I was ready to come back. And he met me at around the clock and we had a great session and I called him and I'm like, Hey, uh, Hey, uh, I just wanted you to know he had been a pivotal help with me and getting better. I said, I'm going to go back to work probably next week. And he says, why? So what do you mean? Why? I need I need to start making money again. That two hundred thousand dollars a year looks really good right now. Yeah. And uh, he's like, uh, Gary, you think God took you out of that? Just put you right back in it. Hmm. And I looked at him. I said, Man, don't do that. Don't. don't. <laughs> I need I'm that money. <laughs> and he was All like, right. I, I got I got an idea. And he had just started that wholesale business in 2011, and he had done about 48 deals that year. And he says, With all your experience, can you come help me build this? You come be a part of this. Mm. And uh, and I, it was the hardest decision I've ever made in my life. Like, okay. seriously, I out of all the ones we had made up that point, that was literally one of the hardest because I could have a check for over two grand in two weeks if I went back versus going to corporate or going to helping Wayne and, and maybe making 20,000 a year. I don't, I didn't know. I know what I'd make. Yeah. And, and we took that jump and that leap of faith and, and uh, God had really, truly, that was that moment of feeling that God had fully installed in me that increased faith at that moment. And, and that's where we ended up. And, and, and it was a journey from there to here. I worked with Wayne for over five years and did almost 300 deals a year on Northwest Indiana. And then, and then led us to the opportunity to help others, which I had in my heart, you know, Brad, I told God that if he gave my life back, I'd give back to helping others. And I, I had that peace and knowing that I should do that, but I also knew that I had no right to help others until I became healthy myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And not just physically healthy, but financially healthy again. And uh, and we worked really hard and every dime we made, we saved. And we, we created a freedom plan of, I just needed to get to $5,312 a month. That was my number. $5,312 a month, monthly cash flow created the freedom we needed in our life. 60 grand a year is all we needed to be free. We didn't live extraordinarily outside of our means. Even through corporate America, we never upgraded and bought fancy stuff. We just we just lived with what God gave us and then we gave the rest, right? And then we worked to save. Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below and I'm gonna try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.